so today I want to talk about how you can create text overlays over images. So I'm starting out with a very simple grid. I've got in my main element a whole bunch of divs. I've given them class names so I can refer to them in the CSS. There's an image and then a paragraph and I want to put this text over top of the image and I want to do that in all of these items. So if we look in the web page right now the default is I'm using um, CSS grid to lay this out and we'll talk about that in a minute but I want to take this text and I want to place it over top of each of the images. I want to do it in a way that as I resize the page my images are shrinking and growing but I don't want my text to spill out I don't want it to start overlapping other images I don't want to leave large gaps of space I take this text and move it up I don't want to leave a gap below here and most importantly for accessibility in terms of people with lower vision being able to read this or actually anybody being able to read this well I want to be able to make sure that the text is still readable while being placed on top of each of the images so here you can see it's a very fine text if I put it over here you might have a little bit of trouble reading it this one's not too bad it's going to be on a what lighter background here I could have some issues here I'll definitely have some issues with a very dark image behind it so you never know what the image is going to be I've got a whole bunch of very different images here so we can test this out so how do we do this how do we take that text and put it on top of here well if we're taking a look at the content here just with the default layout we've got an image and then below it there's a paragraph and if I'm move my mouse over the image here um, it's probably hard for you to see right now but there's a little faint line just above the 700 marker where this image is sitting and if I switch over to the paragraph there is actually a little gap that is in between the image and the text I want to make sure that I get rid of that gap as well have these pressed together and then move that paragraph up above okay so let's jump into the CSS here and take a look at what we can do so box sizing setting up some default font sizes font weight font family that kind of thing getting rid of the extra padding or margin that could be around the body that lets the backgrounds fit to the edge uh, my header there's nothing special inside of there the grid this is the main element where all of the items are sitting so right here main class grid with all of my content inside of it as I said I'm using display grid and I'm going to calculate how big each of these columns are now normally I could just put 1FR 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 or repeat 3 1FR and that would work so we could even do that now if I take this part out and I replace it with 1FR that is going to work on the surface here the problem that we're going to have is when we actually start to have longer descriptions that we're truncating and sticking an ellipse inside of here CSS grid starts to complain when we talk about affecting how text wraps and what it's going to do is it's going to want to keep as much of that text if we're using 1FR so the text will expand which means the space allotted for an element that has a bigger description is going to grow as well and it's going to mess up with our, our layout so to avoid this I want to use this formula now this is specific to this page right here what I'm doing is I'm taking a hundred percent of the viewport width so my grid is filling up the whole screen so that's the space that I have you can see uh, margin I have zero on the left and right and padding I have one REM on the left and right so this one REM right here and right here that is included in this 100 viewport width 100% of the viewport width so I've got one REM here one REM here and because I want three columns it means there's going to be two gaps I'm setting my grid gap to one REM right here in my CSS so that's what these are so there's one two three four spaces four REMs subtracted from this that gives me all of the space that is left over after the gap and after the padding on the left and right if I take that and divide it by three that is going to be the width of each one of my elements in my grid so that's why we have this formula
And that's why I'm not using the 1FR because later on when I try to wrap the text, we're going to have an issue. So we're going to do a calculation. That's a great use of the CSS calc function. Okay, uh, template rows, they're all going to be the same because I'm loading the same size image for each one of these. Uh, my margin padding I already talked about. My images, I want each one of them to fill 100% of the div that they're inside of. So every one of these images is just stretching out regardless of how big the image actually is. They've all got the same aspect ratio. I'm doing that dynamic calculation and I want them to resize along with the grid. So they're filling 100% of the width. I'm not going to use the 300 by 400 original size. That's just what I'm downloading. I want the CSS to be able to make them grow and shrink along with my layout. Okay, so height auto, maintain the aspect ratio. Um, that little white gap that I was showing here when we go back and forth between the image and the paragraph below, that little gap that you can see in between them, that's what this will get rid of. So by setting it on display block, this is the image. Instead of the display inline block, we're using display block. That will actually get rid of that little tiny gap in here. And now we can see that there is no space between the paragraph and the image. That just makes sure that all of the alignment on my page is going to work out really nicely. You can see right here, I've got one REM. Here, there's one REM. Here, there's one REM. And when we move this text, we're going to have one REM right here. That's what's happening right now. You can see as I highlight the paragraph below the paragraph, between the paragraph and the next image below it, there is one REM of space. So alignment, very important in your layout. We're trying to get everything to be the exact same amount of space between each of the elements. Okay, so the label. This is the paragraph that we're going to move. I've got a font size of one REM. The line height is two, meaning two REMs. Padding, margin, I've got padding on the left and right of the paragraph, so that keeps the text from touching the sides. You can see here, if I remove the one REM, my text is coming right to this edge, and if I move it up, it's going to be against the edge of the image here. We do not want that. We always want to make sure we keep text away from the edges of backgrounds or background color changes. Like here, I've got space around it. I wouldn't want this text touching the edge of the screen here. It just makes it harder to read. So that's why we have this one REM to shift this text in away from that edge. All right, so we're gonna move this up. There's two ways we can do it. First way that we can do it is with negative margin. So going back to some of the earlier versions of CSS and before we had the ability to do transforms, this is the way that it was done. We would use margin top on our paragraph. And what we want to do is we want to shift it up. So I'm going to take the top edge and move it up this amount. So this is going to be the height of my element. I'm going to specify in here absolutely that it's going to be two REMs. So my two REMs is my line height. Now my height is going to be the same thing. My margin top on the paragraph is negative two. And that pulls it up. It moves the entire paragraph and everything below it gets pulled up as well. So now we have the text over the image. But as you can see, there are issues with being able to read it. So we can, in here, let's add color, let's make it white and our background. We can make it a solid color. So I could do something like this. I could set it black with white text. Great contrast. But I don't see it the background actually got stuck in behind the image. If I comment this out temporarily, the margin that moved it, there's the background. But as soon as we shift it up, we lose that background color. It slides in behind the image. The image gets put on top of the background. Backgrounds got built first and then the content came on top of that. So what we need to do in order to fix this problem is we have to add one property, which is position relative. Oops. 
There we go. Now we see the background. It's pulled up. But we're losing part of this image. We don't see the image through this background. So instead of just putting a hard-coded color like this, let's do something with an alpha value. So I'm going to use black as well, or black still. Saturation zero, lightness zero, so that gives me black. And then we can change the opacity. 90%, 80%, 70%, 64%. Now we can start to see the background here. So you can play with the color based on what you're designing. You can play with the amount of transparency. Just remember, we're trying to make this text readable. That is the purpose of this background. So we can go down, you know, 50%, 48%. There we are. So we can still read the text and we can see the image below it. All right, so that was one solution. Now, here we're putting in numbers. These are pretty simple numbers. It's just we're using two REMs for everything. You can, if you want, if you're going to be playing around with the sizes, instead of having to edit all the places where you're setting the font size and the line height and all that, use variables. So let's come up to the top here and we'll create some variables. So defining them for the whole page, I'm going to create something called font, which is going to be my font size. 1rem, that's my font size. My line height is going to be whatever my font size is. So var font times 2. That's going to be my line height, and it's also going to be my height. So I can use this variable for those two places. Then, when I want to move something, whatever the amount of the height, that is how far I'm going to move it. So let's create something called move, and we will, again, do a calc. I'm going to do a calculation of negative 1 times whatever the value is for line. So that's how far up we want to move things. Now that I've got these three variables, I can come down in here and any place that I'm using the value, like here for font size, we can replace that with font. This one is going to be line. Down here where I'm calculating, I mean, we could use it for the padding as well if we wanted, but height, that's the same value as the line height. The margin top is the movement one. So move, just like that. Same solution, just we've got variables. And now if I want to change it, if I decide, you know what, 1 REM is a little bit small, let's try it with 1.4 REM. I've changed the font size, I've changed the line height, I've changed the height, and I've changed how far it's going to move. By just changing the value of that one variable, it still works. All right, so that was the first solution for the movement was with position relative and margin top. If I comment these ones out, so that was version number one. The other one, the more modern one, uses transform. So we're going to take the element and transform it to translate y, so that's in the vertical direction, up and down. What do I want to put in here? Well, which variable? It's the move one negative 2 REM. That's how far we want to move it in the Y direction. So this is going to move it up. Made a typo there. There we go. There we go. So this is working properly now. But the problem we have is that we've now left this big gap. We have moved it, we've transformed it from this location to this location. We've shifted it up, but I need to get rid of this space at the bottom. The way we do that is with margin. So we're going to say that on my paragraph, I want the margin bottom to also be lifted up by the same amount. So var move negative two REMs or whatever the value is. There we go. Now we have the space. Back to the one REM. Same as everything. All right, the last part of the solution is how do we deal with text descriptions, the labels that are not all the same size? Because you're not going to have every single thing with the exact same label. You're going to have different sized descriptions. 
I'm going to put this back, the font size back to one, just so I can put more text and show things a little bit cleaner. So we have this text, and I'm going to add some into this one in the middle. So we'll come down into our HTML. There we go. Brand new description that's a little bit longer. We'll give a little bit more text to that one as well. Okay. So this one fit. This one didn't. That is right here. But if I highlight it, you can see that it is going down to the next line. It is spilling out. I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to set overflow to hidden, which is going to remove the stuff that's down below. But we also want to come back up here. We also want to use text overflow. We can set this to ellipsis to say, hey, wherever the text is going to exceed the size, I want to put the three dots, the ellipsis character there. And you also need to set the white space to no wrap. This is going to force all the text to be on one line. The text overflow says, hey, when you get outside the box, we're going to put the three dots instead. And then we also have to add overflow hidden. So as to not show the text that's going outside. And there we are. So there's my ellipsis showing up right there. This one didn't need it. It still fit. But as I shrink this down, as I reduce the size of the page, you can see that the ellipsis is cutting away more and more of the text as we shrink down. Eventually, this one's going to start to do it as well. And then the rest of them as I get down to smaller and smaller sizes. There we go. So we've got the three dots here, the three dots here. And gradually we'll get down. There we go. So now I've got three dots everywhere. So this works responsively at all sizes with any amount of text that I'm going to be putting inside of there. All right, so I hope that helps you out. I've got a copy of all this code with the commented versions in there as well. Um, that's in a link that's in a, the description down below. If you have any questions, feel free to put them uh, in the comments. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.